morning, early Sunday morning around 2.50 a.m., the sheriff's office received a uh, report of suspicious activity in the area of Pine Needle Road involving possible subjects going through parked vehicles. The caller was able to provide a vehicle description. Deputies immediately responded to the area and observed a vehicle matching the description of the subjects in the vehicle. Deputies conducted a traffic stop and discovered numerous items that possibly had been taken from parked vehicles in the neighborhoods around Pine Needle Road. After further investigations, sheriff deputies took three adults and two juveniles into custody. The three uh, adults, Alex Patterson of Florence, Jeremiah Edward Birch of Florence, Cortex Delay of Florence. Two juveniles were transported to DJJ. And the story could end here, but what I'd like to say is every employee at the sheriff's office here Work extremely hard over the last three years to restore the trust and confidence of the citizens of Florence County and the sheriff's office. At the same time, I've worked to strengthen our partnership with local law enforcement as well as with our state and federal partners. This team also includes one additional very important piece of the puzzle the public and our community partners. In 2010, the Department of Homeland Security began a campaign using the slogan, if you see something, say something. This applies to any suspicious activity. In this case, called a 911, made a huge difference on Sunday. This incident is proof that community engagement with this type of stuff, when you see something, say something, we cannot do it alone. And this is proven, I've always said this in any press conference, anything that I've done with y'all. It, it, it's a tool that, you know, fighting crime comes together when we do this. And that, the, the call put us on this, bottom line. Our mess, message today, if you see something, say something, because it helped. People, and a lot of people say, well, we don't want to bother you. Some people call me the next morning or afternoon saying, we saw this, look. It matters when you notify us because this led to an arrest and this possibly through the investigation is going to lead to more cases where these people have been going in, these subjects have been going in the cars. Y'all got any, anybody got any questions? How many, I noticed two charges up there, two charges. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm presuming that two charges was enough to get them booked in and then they're, they're number two is going to go three, Right. Well, like I said, we we're still investigating. This is probably going to lead to further incidents with this. We, we investigate the city. Also, had if I'm not mistaken that we've had several that the city has made as well on some of these subjects that we got as well. So this is possibly going to lead to bigger things, more break-ins and stuff. What's the best way to stop this besides pretty hard lock them? Lock them. How else can you kind of pick? Well, I, I think, you know, a lot of people, I suggest cameras and the cameras that we have, they notify us and let us know somebody's in the area or somebody's approaching. Um, those are some, lock your car, don't leave a weapon in it. And a, a lot of these uh, incidents, a lot of the guns that we have stolen, I would say 85% of the guns that we have stolen, they come from Situations like this, people not securing the gun or securing the car, and it leads to this. But, Dan, and again, the statement that I want to make clear here, see something, say something. We get paid to respond. Call us, let us know if you see something. And if it's nothing, I mean, it's not illegal for a car to ride through the neighborhood, but at the same time, 2 o'clock in the morning, that's a little suspicious. How many guns did you recover? Out of this stop, we I don't think we recovered any guns on that. I, I don't have any notification of that. I don't have that information. I don't have that report in front of me. But I will say this. When the vehicle was stopped, one of the victims came there and identified their identified them and the property that they had. I, I don't have a list of that as of now. This happened uh, 
Sunday morning, uh, 2 30, 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 50, I think it was in the morning. I understand that number of car break in the Has that been a continuous trend over the past recent years? Has the car break, the car break in been happening? Or is it? No, it's been, it's very common here. And we, we, uh, Picked up the patrols. We put them in regions that we're having problems, and that has helped somewhat. Like this case here, the main thing that helped us on this was a nine one one call, get us in to let us know the description of the vehicle. It's like the home invasion. They called, told us the description. We were able to stop that vehicle from the home invasion. Whether it's breaking in cars, whether it's you know shooting, whatever, we get the description. That gives us probable cause and something to work on to make us stop. In the neighborhood. That's correct. We, we were, well, what we've done is we've divided our regions up and made them where, you know, the response time, we're trying to cut that down. And I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, it was six minutes before they made the traffic stop from the initial call. So that's uh, a lot better than what we were seeing prior to office in the first, you know, few months in the office. We were uh, going anywhere from 10 to seven, 16, 17 minutes. I, I think uh, one of them was unlocked. Am I correct on that, Chief? One of them was unlocked. Yeah. And I, I think when they heard, I don't know, I, I actually one of the victims just called me and said they really appreciated our quick response and, you know, that we won't Johnny on the spot with it. But um, I don't know what alerted him, but I, I think he was uh, the person that made the 911 call. And I really thank him because, to be honest with you, you sleep through some people. Somebody's in the yard, but I didn't get up, you know, and it, it helps us tremendously when we get notified. I don't have that, I, which we got body camera um, of it, but I have not reviewed that yet. Juveniles, I mean, not being home that time of night, that's something maybe the parents are kind of checking on a little more. Uh, absolutely, but that's a common. That's all the time. Parents don't parent now. The kids parent now. I mean, the kids do what they want to do. That's a lot of our issue now. And I would say 90% of the crimes that we deal with are juvenile. that are not held accountable. They can't, they don't make it in school. They're always an issue there at school. Parents fussing about something, but they don't, they don't raise their children. How did the, how did the traffic stop and the arrest it went smooth. I mean, they, uh, my corporal, he made the stop and felt that there was something going on. He called for backup and it led to the rest of them and they found the stolen items in the car. Sure. Do you know if the victim of the first time friend or harm in any way or unknown? Unknown on that. I don't have it. I think that was the car was not stolen. Yeah. Okay. Item, items from the car. But I, I think it was one of the, am I correct on that? One of the subjects that we arrested, it was his mother's car, aunt's car. Am I correct on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but the car was not stolen. Pine Needles. That's a, a residential area. It's very populated there, I would say. That would be the proper. Big housing. Yes, it's, it's, it's very populated. These five were just running around, they stop the neighbor, and everybody run out, ran to the car, right. back to the car, drive on to the next. I think the initial report that the victim made, uh, they were running on the porches and going through cars and gave the description, and that's what led us in route there. Yeah, do you think they were involved in some four? Well, that's that's what we're working on. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable that this will lead to other break-ins in the area because the five have um, been playing this type of game for a while. Here, I, I go back to the team something thing. I've been doing so many reports. Just say, no matter what county it is, the people... Please, if you see something, say something. Do you think this restores, you know, any lost trust in, in law enforcement, whether it's Florence County or, or Dillon County, that if they come, they call 
all you guys. You guys check it out. Lo and behold, in this case, this is what panned out. And now this could lead to other things. I do. You know, us being notified, and I can promise you I get notified all the time about stuff. And I, I'm going to answer my phone, and we're going to respond accordingly. But, yes, I, th I think this is what it's all about, restoring the trust in the citizens of this county and to anyone uh, that calls and we respond in a fashion that we care and we, we feel that it's a need to get on out there. And, the, uh, again, you get a six-minute response time from the traffic stop to responding to the house. So that's, that's, that's pretty doggone good. And, and citizens can be protected. Uh, we don't know. That's right. And that's a good point. Thank you, Tanya. But that's true. We're not going to, that information will not be shared. This is because when we do walk into these neighborhoods and stuff, it, it always is revolving circle. And it is. Not wanting to talk to you all. And you're like, I would just like to say the trust is here. They can come see me personally and sit down with me. I'll meet them wherever. I had to come out at two o'clock in the morning to go meet with people because of the fear of someone saying, okay, you, you went and told on us and now retaliation. But I understand that point of it. And I promise you I'll do everything in my power as a county sheriff here to ensure them that the trust the confidentiality will not be late here, I promise. What were happening in any manner these are not run down troublesome neighborhoods. These are that's correct. They, you and wouldn't expect that to answer at all. Correct. Those, those are areas that they feel like and all you know, being honest with you, this is a this is the jackpot here if we can find something open here. Uh, I, High class areas. I mean, I, it's a good area, and uh, to hit something in there, you know, you know, you're gonna get a goodie, and that's what they're looking for. You know, well, I'm hitting it over here. I'm gonna get something good out of the car. I think at one time we had one one hit that stole a bunch of sunglasses, high dollar sunglasses, and again, leave your car open. And it's sad that we live in this area. I mean, in Sarah, leave it, lock your house and lock your car. You know, my suggestion is buy, get you a dog and get you a gun and protect yourself. 